pleasure to get to be here. I am the odd person out because I'm not a Mainer. Um, I, I, my, my brother and my sister-in-law who are, are here tonight, so it's great fun to see them and I claim some, some main status through them. If you were a cynic, you might say that I was here because I live up in the mountains of northern Vermont and as of this week, all of our leaves are down, so I have to come look at yours for a while, um, and they are pretty. But really, I'm here because this is the most important thing on a ballot anywhere in this country this November. Um, this question goes to the heart of the three things that I think represent real crises in this country goes right to their heart. The first is this crisis of inequality that has been growing my whole adult life. You know, from the end of World War II till the year I graduated from high school in the 1970s, equality was growing in America. There was a contraction of inequality. But beginning in the late 1970s, we began to go further apart till now we're at this grotesque place where there are individual Americans with as much wealth as 100 million of our people. Um, it's cartoonish and it becomes a grim story when the bottom line gets to things like turning off your power. If 10% of Maine got their power turned off, that means another 20% of Maine is sitting there worrying it's going to happen to them. That's extraordinary, because it's not like power in our world is some optional thing that you might need or might not. Uh, it's absolutely central to everything that we do. Um, and it does not need, I mean, I, I read I read where they said, well, we don't turn off people's power in the winter, probably because someone passed a law against it, but that's, you know, that's, a, that's not saying very much. I mean, I, I live at the end of a dirt road. I mean, if the power goes off in the winter, at least you've got your wood stove and your freezer's not going to thaw instantly, you know. Uh, it's in the summer when your power goes off and suddenly the buck you shot last fall is thawed out, you know and suddenly your insulin uh, uh, is warm and suddenly there's no place for the baby formula and on and on and on. All of that so that these companies can get $187 million in profit out to whoever owns them. Rest assured, the people taking that $187 million don't need it. They're on the other end of that inequality spectrum. They're the ones with plenty. And there is no possible good excuse for shipping all that money out of state. Um, it's a sin, to put it mildly. Now, it's not like Pine Tree Power is going to be a charity. People are still going to have to pay their light bills, you know. But they're not going to have to pay to make more money for someone far, far, far away. Um, they're not going to have to pay to cover that $187 million every year. Bills will go down for people in Maine, and that means that people's lives will get easier, which is what we should be trying to do all the time. The second, the second crisis... The second crisis, of course, is the existential crisis that this earth now faces, the one I've spent my life working on. And I am glad that this election comes in 2023 because it's never been clearer to anyone what that crisis looks like. We had a hundred straight days. In fact, it's, the number is continuing to uh, go up. We've had on this planet the hottest day for that date ever measured. In June, we got to just the hottest, June and early July are the hottest parts of the year on planet Earth because of the rotation of the sun. We had days that scientists said were the hottest we've ever recorded. Now those records only go back 200 years, thermometers, but scientists are good at figuring out the proxies, the ocean cores and ice cores and tree rings that let us go back 
much, much further. The scientists are convinced the weather we had this summer was the hottest weather that we've had on this planet for at least 125,000 years. That means no human society that we would recognize has ever dealt with the kind of weather that we're now dealing with. And we see what happens. We see that, look just a little bit north at the boreal forest of Canada. It's been on fire since April. It's going to be on fire until the snows come, and even that may not be enough to put it out because it gets down in those roots and, and, and just smolders. Those fires in Canada have produced twice as much carbon as all of Canada produces from all the flying and cooking and driving and heating and cooling that they do in a year. That's what a feedback cycle looks like. And we see it all over the world. The extraordinary fires and extraordinary flooding that are happening everywhere. Vermont, where I live, took it on the chin this summer. My town got 35 inches of rain in five weeks. We lost a, a trailer house about a half mile from our home to a landslide in August. Um, 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 Montpelier, our capital, is essentially a ghost town now. Every business downtown still flooded out. But that's nothing compared to what happened in Libya three or four weeks ago. They had the biggest rainstorm they've ever had, so big that it washed out two dams and then washed 10,000 people out to sea where they drowned in an hour. That's what the planet that we're building looks like. We obviously know what we need to do to get away from this. We have to stop burning fossil fuel and electrify things fast. We're completely capable of doing that. The scientists and engineers have done their part. We now live on a planet where the cheapest way to make energy is to point a sheet of glass at the sun. That is a miracle. If we embraced it fast and fully, we have a fighting chance. But we aren't, and the reason we're not moving fast enough is the reason we're here tonight. It's because these utilities don't want to do anything fast, anything that disrupts their business model in any way. They would be completely happy to just keep up with business as usual as the planet melted around them. What they care about is that $187 million, that and nothing else. Now. Now, the good news is that if someone starts doing this work like Pine Tree Power, it's going to be not just affordable, it's going to be an economic blessing to people across Maine as they do it. But they won't, the, the utilities won't do it because it's not an economic blessing to them. When they look at something new, the question, they do not ask the obvious questions. Does this make sense for our customers? And does this make sense for the planet those customers live on? The only question they ask is, does this make 15%? And if it doesn't make 15% return on investment, then they want nothing to do with it, okay? Pine Tree Power won't operate under those constraints because it's not trying to make $187 million to ship out of state. It's trying to provide power at an affordable cost to people who need it and will realize how quickly they can move as smart utilities, many of them publicly owned around the country, are moving really fast towards virtual power plants and distributed energy sources and on and on and on. This is completely doable. It's what we have to do. Let's it's do what it. we have to yeah. do fast. That's right. Yeah. And the third crisis that this is a part of, that it exemplifies perfectly, is the democracy crisis in this country. I have been in the state of Maine now for two hours. I turned on the TV when I got to my hotel room, and the first thing I saw was about four ads telling me that I should, how I should, that I should vote no on question three, because I don't even know why, um, 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 but just that I should be scared and vote no, okay? Um, at the moment, the utilities are outspending the people 32 to 1 on this. I think the question
that I would be asking all my neighbors as I was talking to them in the weeks before this election is, if they're willing to spend that much money, what does it tell you? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They are defending this money siphon that they've got going here that's just sucking greenbacks out of Portland and out of Augusta and out of Bar Harbor and out of Bangor and out of every place else and sending it off to, you know, and sending it off to Swiss bank accounts someplace, you know. Um, um, I was emailing back and forth this morning with my friend and neighbor Bernie, and he, of course, would say that this is a direct result of this democracy crisis that got badly exacerbated when the Supreme Court decided Citizens United. We obviously have to overcome that someday, but in the meantime, we've got to figure out how to stand up to that money power. My dear friend and the best organizer I know, a guy named the Reverend Lennox Yearwood from the Hip Hop Caucus, always says, organized people be organized money every time. That's optimistic. It's not true, it doesn't happen every time, but it can happen. It can happen if we keep reminding people in the state of Maine that this is an attack not only on our climate and not only on people's right to reasonably affordable power, but also an attack on our democracy. There is no way that it makes sense for them to be outspending people by these huge, huge sums. Now, the final reason I'm here just has to do with the wonderful people at Third Act. Um, you know, it's very true that young people have been leading the work on all these things. I started 350.org with seven college students. We organized this massive divestment campaign that's now at $40 trillion in endowments and portfolios that have divested from fossil fuel. It was mostly young people doing that on college campuses. When they got out of college, they went on to found the Sunrise Movement that brought us the Green New Deal. And it's because they made that declaration in the Green New Deal that we have finally, once it ran through the congressional sausage making machine, once it ran through Joe Manchin, what, we ended up with the Inflation Reduction Act. Yay. Now, <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it would have been if we hadn't had those young people pushing us to do it. And of course, the same is true around the world. You all know about Greta Thunberg, and you should. She's one of my favorite people to work with on the planet. I adore her. It was really fun to send her a congratulations message this June when she graduated from high school. Um, <laughs> um, um, I don't know. Um, I, and she'd be the first to say there's 10,000 Greta's around the world, young people doing this kind of work. Lucy's a perfect example. I've known her since she was a pup, and you know, it's amazing to watch them come up and provide that leadership. But it is not okay to say, oh, it's up to the next generation to solve these problems. Okay? Because for all their energy and intelligence, and idealism, young people lack the structural power to make change on the scale that we need in the time that we have by themselves. Who has structural power? We do. People with hairlines like mine, okay? <laughs> um, um, if you've got hair coming out your ears, you have structural power coming out <laughs> your ears too, okay? Um, um, Maine is the oldest state in the Union. Hell yes, baby. That is fantastic. Because that's what's going to put this over the top. They're counting on that not happening. They're counting on the fact that old guys, old people are conservative. Old people do not want change. Um, we do fear change. But not the change of the logo on the envelope with your power bill in it. That's not going to terrify us, you know. I mean, if it did, I'd rather get one with a pine tree on it anyway, you know. Um, 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 
That's not what we fear. The changes that we fear are the scary ones, the ones that are happening around us, that are taking us from the world that we knew when we were born into a world very, very different. We fear a world where a tiny percentage of people control all the money because we know what happens when that happens, that it leads to chaos and instability and misery and We've seen world work better than it's working now. We fear a world where democracy gets overrun, where it gets overrun by idiots charging up the Capitol steps to you know, batter police officers, and when it gets overrun by corporations with too much money. What does CMP stand for? It stands for corporate monopoly power, and it is time to put it in its yeah. place. Yeah. What do we fear? We fear a physical world, a planet Earth, entirely different than the one that we were born onto. Sometimes people tell me, you're a radical, and I say, I am not a radical. Uh, radical, radicals work at utilities. If you're willing to get up every day and run your business such that it is abundantly clear that the results will melt the polar ice caps, then you are a radical uh, on a scale. I mean, no 60s radical thought they were going to change the temperature of the earth, okay? Um, um, I'm a conservative, I think, because I like a world with a little bit of ice at the top and bottom and an odd coral reef in between, you know? Um, that's the world that I knew and love. I want a world where it's still, I mean, at least at my house, we're in October 15th, we're 1,500 feet in the Green Mountains. We haven't had a frost yet. Um, that's, that's, a scary and radical proposition. I don't want a world where there's not snow on top of Katahdin in the winter where you can't ski at, you know, Sunday River or Saddleback or something. Um, I don't want a world where the Gulf of Maine is too hot for lobsters. Uh, I don't want a world where the Atlantic is sloshing over the breakwaters all the time. To go back where I started, I don't want a world where the birch and beech and maple forests of New England have been replaced by, at best, some oak and hickory and we get a nice drab brown come the autumn. I like the world that we have. And in order to preserve the world that we have known, we have to stand up to the forces that are wrecking it you guys have an amazing chance to do that on November 7th. Let's do it. Do not waste this chance, man. You have extraordinary leverage. You've got a superpower for the next couple of weeks. Do not waste a minute of it. Make it happen because if you do, you will strike a blow that echoes out across this country and around the world, and you will do it at a time when it could not be needed more. Thank you so much for doing that.